Hello, welcome back to another CM Travels video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Canon 300mm f4 ISL lens. What an amazing lens! So, three tips today. But first, I want to send a shout out. Thank you so much to all of you for subscribing and hitting the thumbs up on the videos. We greatly appreciate that. That really helps us bring you more content. My name is Murray Forbes and I run a wildlife travel company. Now, if you're interested in some of those itineraries, here are some videos, suggestions. Click on one of those and those will give you more travel related stuff. The highlight for us is the last trip we did to Antarctica check that out as well. If you're interested in more reviews, particularly the first video I made with the 300mm lens, click that here. I would suggest you watch that first before you watch this video. Come back to me when you finish with that one. Greatly appreciate it. I saw from our YouTube channel that this particular video was getting a lot more views than any of the others. So I'm going to be giving you three tips with the Canon lens today and i hope you enjoy it i hope it's good content please if it is hit that thumbs up and leave your comments down below we'd greatly appreciate that let's get into it number one tip so i use my 300 mm lens for wildlife photography not for bird photography because i don't believe that 300 is enough reach for bird photography but it is plenty reach for wildlife photography branching off slightly because if you're going to be shooting with this lens and using wildlife, and this is just a general tip in life and for wildlife photography, always try and get eye level with your subjects or lower. Now, a lot of your fantastic wildlife photographers out there use camera traps and remote trapping to get some of the amazing images that they get. I don't have any of that sort of equipment, and I'm guessing that you do not either. But... 300 gives you enough reach to fill the frame uh, and if you particularly if you're on a crop sensor lens like the 7D Mark II for example which I use uh, you get a little bit more magnification which is really really great. Second is really to well the second point of point one is that try to create an intimate moment wait for something to happen you don't want to take a photograph of a sleeping lion believe me you need to have the patience to wait for them to get up or move around and that goes for any animal whatsoever on the face of the planet. So believe me, have a bit of patience, wait for the animal to move. It will move, so just give it time. Now, this is the second, real second point, is that it is such a user-friendly lens. It is lightweight and fits so easily into my bag. And if you're traveling long distances or going on long haul flights, having a light carry-on bag really makes a huge difference. Plus, you can only use like eight kilos or 10 kilos or whatever it is, whatever flight you're flying on. And the camera gear is just so, so important. So having it with you all the time is obviously very important. The lens is way lighter than its counterpart. Yes, the 2.8 probably is fantastic. And yes, lots of wildlife photographers use them. But in my honest opinion, I have found absolutely nothing wrong with the F4. It creates amazing smooth backgrounds. And for me, that is really, really key. That leads me into the third tip today, knowing the lens. So it's not the fastest lens on the market at the moment. It won't be. Uh, if you're interested, there's a comparison review here with a 70 to 300 F4 to 5.6 LIS lens as well. And it is faster, at least the 70 to 300. The fixed 300 is a is slower so use your focus modes know which ones work the best if you're going to be center weighted center point even or if you're going to be splitting the focus modes into the three different uh, thirds then do that before you compose and take the image because it'll really help the the lens be as fast as it can possibly be as well as the fact that if you going to be taking it uh, with very busy backgrounds it's going to get confused so the smoother background you can get i.e the clearer the background you can get this will help the lens be faster so know which autofocus modes work best for you and the lens get to know it before you go out on your travel adventure or safari hopefully with us see in travels do it now click the link you know me we're going to make it happen Right, I'm going to end it there. Thank you so, so much for joining us here on CM Travels. My name is Murray Forbes. I'm wishing you an epic day.